Hey, how's it going everyone? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So we got our buttons working, or at least got one working. The editor and quit button still do nothing. So we are going to spend this episode making these buttons do something. The play one works though. We can hit play and go into our game real quick. And we are going to make the quit button exit the program, which takes like 10 seconds. We'll do that uh, in a minute. And the editor, we are going to spend this episode kind of creating like a the base for our editor. Pretty much it's just a blank tile grid and we'll reinstitute the set tile methods from our player class that we stripped down before and put them in the editor. So that's what we're gonna do this time. And I think next time we're gonna work on actually saving and loading maps with the editor, which is super exciting. But we need to do that for a while. So we have multiple maps and kind of, you know, choose what we wanna work on and stuff like that. Um, the reason I talk about next week is because as of today, I've changed the Patreon rewards for the early bird perk or whatever, uh, so that instead of just being two days early, it's a full week early. So pretty much what that means is the people that were getting episodes two days early due to their support on Patreon are now getting it a full week early. So right now, if you're one of those people, after this episode's over, you can go ahead and watch next week's episode, which just got posted to Patreon. So make sure to check that out. But for this episode, we're going to start off by going to the main menu class. And you can see here we made our button, uh, our play button do something. And right below that, we're gonna say if menu UI dot is button clicked, quit, because remember that's what we named our button right up here. Then we're just gonna say system dot exit and put a zero in there. Super simple, right? Uh, eventually we'll probably wanna do more in here than this is like a pretty a uh, pretty robust way of exiting the program. We'll probably want to do more and maybe like do some saving and loading functionality and stuff like that. But for now, when we run the game and we hit quit, it'll exit our program. Super easy, huh? So in between here, because I like to have it in the same order as the buttons on the screen, we're gonna say if menu UI dot is button clicked editor, uh, what do we do here? We'll say editor, no. State manager, same thing as the uh, game right above us. State manager dot set state, game state, editor. So now when we run the game, we hit editor, guess what's gonna happen? If you guessed nothing, you're right. But secretly behind the scenes, we're changing the state to the editor state. So now in our state manager class here, you can see our editor state does nothing. So let's go ahead and change that. We're gonna make it the same as the top two by saying if editor is equal to null, then editor equals new editor. And if you're wondering how we have an editor class, we made it real quick a few episodes back, if you recall, and it's just empty right now, but we're just calling new editor. And back to our state manager, we're gonna say editor dot update. We don't have an update method yet, but just type it there and we will go and make one. So let's head on over to our editor class then. And it's looking pretty sparse here. Uh, we're gonna make just one variable for now, I think. We just need a tile grid really to get our basic editor going. Uh, private tile grid, grid. And then we'll make it a constructor, public, editor. And it's gonna take no arguments. Uh, so eventually what we wanna do is we wanna create probably maps of different sizes and stuff like that. Uh, although I'm not sure, do we want to do that? Probably. When we do that, we'll have like sliders that can make the width and the height and stuff like that. Um, so at that point, we probably want to put the sliders in the main menu and then pass that in as an argument for the editor. But for now, the editor takes no arguments and we're just gonna say grid equals new grid. And grid takes, oops, 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 oops. Grid equals new tile grid. And this takes no arguments as well, because if you'll recall, we have the one that we're using for the game right here where we take the the map and we pass it in. We kind of decide which tile is which and set it up. But we also have this smaller constructor right here that just makes everything grass by default. And so that's what we want for the editor. We just want like a blank slate to work with. So let's go back to our editor class and make our public void update method. And for now, we're just gonna draw the grid. So grid.draw and that will fix the state manager issue. And now let's try running it and see if this works. So run the game, we can quit it obviously, and we can play it obviously. Let's see if editor works. 
It did, sweet. So now we have a base map that we can play on. And you can tell that it's different from our game map, which is being saved in a map variable. The editor map is just a brand new slate that we can start creating stuff on. But we can't actually change anything in it right now, as you've probably noticed by clicking, because we have no set tile method in the editor class. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go to our uh, player class, has all our secrets, such as set tile. We can just copy and paste this, and we can actually delete it from the player class, because I don't believe we'll need it there anymore. So copy that set tile method, go to the editor, and we'll put it right, hmm, we'll put it below the update method. And we can make this actually private, no need to be public. And it requires tile types, which we will have to set up. But first, let's go ahead to our player class and steal some more stuff, such as our mouse and keyboard input. So we can actually copy all this stuff from the comment that says handle mouse input all the way down to right here. Copy that, don't delete it. And let's go to our editor class and go put it below the draw call. And if your thing's kind of indented incorrectly like mine is, you can hit control shift F and it will kind of indent everything correctly. It also likes to kind of break up the lines here, which I find annoying, but it'll get it at least all the way on the indent. So we have a lot of errors now because we're kind of applying our game class update to our editor class. We need to make some changes. Uh, the first off is we don't want to create towers in our editor. Uh, we might eventually, if you want like a map that has like starting towers, but for right now, we're not going to get into that. So let's go ahead and get rid of this tower creation, towerList.add, delete that, uncomment the set tile because we want to use that again. And we can get rid of this uh, and also this left mouse button down, all the calls to that, because we want to paint on the uh, grid. You know, we don't want to have to like click every single tile in a row. We just want to kind of like drag across and paint it like dirt or water. So we don't need that whole mouse button down thing that we had for the uh, game class. We can also get rid of this T call for a tower. So just delete this entire if statement right here. And then for the left and right arrow keys, uh, we can... First off, we're going to remove this clock call and this one right here. And for the right key, we're going to call move index, which is another method we need to borrow from our player class, I believe. So in our player class, move index is down here. So let's go ahead and copy this. And you can also delete it from the player class again. And we will put that at the bottom of our editor class. Sorry if I'm going kind of fast here, but we're just copy pasting. So hopefully you guys can uh, pause the video if you get lost. Um, so we need to make an index, obviously, because we have a lot of things that are referencing this index. So let's go ahead to the top of our class and make a private int named index. And when we create our editor, we will say this dot index equals zero, we'll start it at zero, and we should probably put this dot grid in front of that, just to be super safe and specific. And now that should get rid of the index errors. So what we want to do is now make the tile types that we did last time. So eventually we're going to have a cleaner way of doing this. Uh, let's go to our player class here. You see right now we're actually setting all of these to a, uh, what am I trying to say? An array list? Is it an array list? Oh no, it's just an array of types. So we like actually type out like grass is zero and dirt is one and water is two. We won't do that forever uh, because obviously once we have like, you know, five or 10 or however many tile types you have in your game, uh, it's going to get really annoying to type all that out and have it. And it looks ugly, but for now we're just going to keep it until we go back and uh, clean our code up a little bit, which I think we'll do soon. I think soon we'll have an episode that just kind of looks through everything and makes it a little bit sharper. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and copy this code right here copy it and we can actually delete that I believe uh, we'll keep it in the player class for now but let's go ahead and copy that and go to our editor and inside the constructor public editor paste it in there so obviously we need to make a types variable now so private tile type and it's an array so put the little brackets there and name it types and that should work, I believe. Do you guys think it'll work? Am I missing something obvious? Let's try it. 
Uh, we don't need this method anymore. If you have it, you might not have it, or this one. All right, let's try writing this. And let's go to our editor. And now if I hit the right arrow key, I should be able to paint dirt, which I am. Pretty sweet, works perfectly. Do I have water too? I do, I have water as well. So now we've officially established an editor because if you remember, we had these methods before, right? Like it's nothing brand new, uh, changing tiles of the mouse. We did like in episode 20 or something like that. Uh, but the difference is that now we're able to distinguish these kind of builder methods that like set tiles and stuff like that and loaded and saving into a whole different part of our game. So we move those to our editor section. And if you go in the play section, we can't change the tiles, obviously, because when we click, we place towers and stuff. So it's just kind of a matter of putting these appropriate methods in the, uh, or putting these methods in the appropriate sections of the game. So next episode, we're going to work more on our editor and perhaps getting into loading and saving maps. That might take a couple episodes. I'm not sure. But if you are a patron, you can actually find out right now by going to the next episode. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.